Hey guys, how are you all doing? Please let me know if you can hear me well. Hello Vincent. Hi Al. Happy New Year to you as well. I hope that that you can hear me well. Please send me a sign that that everything is okay and I'm transmitting. Obviously I'm transmitting because I see uh, Miral is here. Happy New Year, Miral. Wonderful. I'm happy to see new, new. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to see you again. Not new. All right. All right. So today we're going to speak about trading goals for the new year. As usual, I'm going to make the presentation, okay, as prepared, and then at the end we can discuss your questions. So be taking notes, and then at the end I will be taking your questions. And then we can have a chat. So, if you have ever set trading goals before, I know what you're thinking. I'm sure that you concluded setting goals is useless. But that's not completely true. And today, I want to show you a very effective way to approach your goals when it comes to trading. I'm sure the majority of you consciously or unconsciously has some goals or goal in mind and I'm hoping that what we will speak today will help you make those goals a reality. And before we even begin talking about goals, I want to share with you this illustration that accurately represents the reality of trading. This graphic is based on empirical stats, so it is not precise, it's not exact, but it is close. So you can see that at the bottom of the pyramid, we see all traders starting with a big goal in mind, and that is to make money fast. But 40% of them give up after four weeks. Why? It's not because they didn't have a goal or because their goal was not big enough or motivating enough? By the end of this presentation, we'll try to answer that. The next layer in the pyramid shows 80% out the first two months. And you can see that only 7% remain after five years. At the end, only 1% earn money. And I have heard from researchers and brokers who tell me that the real number for the tip of the pyramid actually is lower. It's not even 1%, but probably close to 0.01%. So the question arises, how do we manage to get into the top of that pyramid? How do we become part of that 1% or 0.01% of all traders who profit net of fees. And by profit net of fees, I mean the amount of profit that remains after all associated fees have been subtracted from the gross profits you get. Essentially, it's what you actually earn as profit once all costs, uh, charges, commissions, spreads, etc. The net profit is the real bottom line, the actual amount that you benefit from, uh, let's say, trading, after everything is paid out. Trading is no different from any other activity where we want to succeed. Anytime you want to achieve excellence in any activity, you need to focus on it. You need earnestness and you need goals. Now, many of you who have attended goal seminars are aware that in order to achieve a big goal, you need to set minor and intermediate ones. If you want to be a pianist, your just a second because I miss it. Here is a slide and I didn't want to miss it because this is a slide of my, a picture of my wife that she, she is she happens to be a pianist so if you want to be a, a pianist 
your main goal could be to play concerts around the world. But in order to do that, you need smaller goals. You need to learn etudes, exercises, repertoire, with a degree of difficulty that is in accordance with your level of development. When that is broken, you know, the, the development of the pianist gets completely destroyed. Or let's say of the instrumentalist. If you want to, let's say, you are in the first year of your piano learning and you want to play a repertoire from the eighth year, you know, you're not going to do a good job. In fact, you're going to be very frustrated. The reason is because we can't skip the smaller goals and go directly to the main one. In fact, we cannot skip um, the intermediate goals at all. Let's say that with the same example that if you want to be a pianist, let's say that your first goal will probably be to be accepted in a music school or conservatory. You can't make your first goal to play in Carnegie Hall. It would be unrealistic, right? So your first goal would probably be accepting a music school. Then you have to learn the etudes. You have to do the exercises, the repertoire, the arpeggios, the, cho the chords, etc. So you can't skip any of those. And it's very easy to understand. We all understand this uh, concept. It's typically referred as to milestones uh, goals. That basically refers to significant, clearly defined objectives or targets along the path to achieving a larger goal. These milestones act as checkpoints or markers of progress, breaking down a long-term goal or project into smaller, more manageable segment. Each milestone represents a significant achievement or phase in the process that moves you closer to the ultimate goal. Let us say I want to become a medical doctor and I'm in high school. My first goal is to get a high school diploma. We wouldn't think that our first goal would be to perform an open heart surgery. We have a clear concept of milestones goals even if we have not thought of that. But when it comes to, um, let's say, worthy objectives, we all understand that part. But when it comes to trading, we don't. When it comes to trading, our first goal is typically to earn money. And not to just earn extra money that could help our finances. No, no. Our first goal is to earn money and a lot of it. I hear novices that want to learn to, to earn uh, $1,000 a day when they haven't even learned the basics of technical analysis. So I hope you can see the problem there. So how do we resolve this? Is there a reasonable milestone that we can use in trading? Some traders try to address that by simply setting smaller amounts as goals. For instance, instead of $1,000, because it's a bit unrealistic, then they set or they recommend to set a $250 a day. However, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure that you will agree, if you have ever tried to do that, you know that that approach doesn't work either. And I'll tell you why in a second. But first, let's address what a reasonable milestone in trading can be. In my opinion, if someone sets as a goal to break even in the first year of trading, that person will likely be on the way to achieve a much larger success. You can actually predict it accurately. Breaking even in your first year of trading is not such an easy thing to do. It's actually a very ambitious goal considering that 40% of market participants lose their accounts during the first month and 80% give up trading within the first two months as we saw in the, in the graphic that I showed you in the beginning. In fact, there are serious professionals who end their year negative and those who end 
positive uh, year after year are really rare. They become legends of trading. That's why we need to implement money uh, management practices so we can survive when the wind is not blowing our way, so to speak, right? And I want to illustrate this point very, let's say, graphically, because I know the majority of people don't want to hear that. And unfortunately, I know this is not very encouraging, but I would suggest please pay close attention to this, because what I'm telling you is the absolute truth, the absolute reality of trading. So to illustrate this point, I'm going to show you the net return of Dunn Capital, one of the best performing capital management firms, firms in the world, not from two years. They have been in business since 1974 and they are trading over $1.4 billion in assets. Okay, so you can see this is not a, a beginner. This one, this uh, table here, covers from 2003 to 2017, I thought it was enough to illustrate my point. Notice how they had one big year in 2008 where they had a net return, you can see it at the end in, uh, in the last column where it says year, they had a net return of 51%. But in 2003, 2004, and 2005, three years in a row, they lost money every single year. So even one of the best market wizards in the world who trade over $1.4 billion have years of losses and several years in a row of losses. Now, please focus on the monthly returns. Notice how they don't have a 100% monthly return uh, as most novices in trading expect to achieve. They get 3%, they get 6%. In super good months, they get 14%. And notice that since 2009, they have not managed to get to 20% monthly returns. That's an interesting thing to observe. And that's the reality for one of the best performing companies in the world since 1974, trading over a billion dollars. There are many, and I mean many, hedge funds that are just losing money continuously. Yet, when I mention to novice traders that a good goal for their first year is not to lose money, they get disappointed. No wonder why they believe that setting goals in trading is useless. And I'm sure you're wondering, what about the second year? So we're going to cover that as well. But you can see that achieving that goal of, of not losing money the first year is a huge thing to accomplish. There are... Let's say, no, there are, let's say, there is no really a rule, and there are, of course, trading geniuses like William Wood, who I introduced in one of our videos. That I'm pointing in, in the slide to that video. If you haven't watched it, really watch the interview. I recommend you do so because it's really inspiring, and this guy is really sincere, really honest, and you can see it in, in, the, in the video. So, but by, let's go back to our second milestone. I would say that a good, acceptable, reasonable, and achievable goal for the second year after having achieved your break-even goal for the first is to get a 10% return on investment. And that's already better than many trading funds. So in this slide, I'm showing you the Warren Buffett. You all know Warren Buffett. He's famous for having an annual ROI of 20%. Put that in perspective. So you don't think that a 10% ROI is too small of a goal for your second year of trading. I know you may be thinking, 
this cannot be true because you have seen channels and many traders who show how they transform a hundred dollars into a million dollars in 10 days while they sleep or, or they surf or whatever. All I can say is just look at the returns of Don Capital or Warren Buffett or both and then decide if those channels or those traders are believable. Now, there are things that we can do to make our trading goals more achievable, easier and safer. But here's the problem. Not many people are willing to take those steps because they are more psychological. They require more of an internal work. However, I am going to mention a few here for your consideration in the hope that really helps you. There is an aspect of trading that in my mind is of paramount importance. It is probably one of the first goals we should have when it comes to trading and that is equanimity of mind. What's equanimity? Well, the dictionary defines it as mental calmness, composure and evenness of temper, especially in a difficult situation. The best way I can explain it is as a state of psychological stability and let's say composure which is undisturbed by exposure to emotions. Equanimity is considered an important quality in many philosophical and spiritual traditions. Signifying balance. They, they put it together with detachment and a sense of peace. And in my opinion, it should be considered as the prerequisite of a successful trader. Why? Because armed with equanimity, we can treat both winners and losers with the same stage of mind, with the same attitude, with equanimity. Imagine how much easier our trading experience would be if we were able to adopt equanimity as one of our deepest innermost value. Whenever we take a trade, we have emotions, of course, we have hopes, we have aspirations, we want to win, we expect to win. And if our position turns out to be a winner, we're happy. When we hit a super trade, like we all do eventually, then we are super happy. But whenever we lose, we're down, we're sad, disappointed, even doubtful. We start doubting the setup. We start thinking that the indicator doesn't work as I thought. We start doubting the analytical system. We even question if it is indeed possible to earn a living trading. And that is assuming that we did the right thing and had only small loss. If you look back at the at the table of Don Capital, you will see that while some years had 30% return, the worst losing year they show there in those, those years from 2003 to 2017, they lost only 18%, which is half of what they had in, in, in the winning years. That tells you their winners are bigger than their losers. So they are doing the right thing. And it also tells you that any time we participate in the market, no matter how great our analysis is, no matter how wonderful our strategies might be, and no matter how great traders we might be, losses are bound to happen. So unless we cultivate, unless we work on achieving true equanimity, we will continue to move in that endless cycle of being happy when we win and miserable when we lose. And that emotional roller coaster won't help us improve our trading nor achieving any goal. So when we understand that markets don't listen to us, they are neither in our favor nor against us. When we understand that no matter how great the wave principle 
you know, I am a big propounder of the wave principle. No matter how great the wave principle is to predict markets move and how good we are at forecasting the market or the next meaningful direction in the market, the fact is that markets do whatever markets do. And knowing that we cannot influence the price direction by anything we do allows for the emergence of a certain peace of mind. And in that state, we can do our very best to prepare ourselves and to do the most impeccable actions regarding, regardless um, of the result that we may get in such or such trade. And this brings us um, up another value that should be fundamental for any trader and that should be a perfect goal for all of us no matter how experienced we may be no matter uh, what a stage of a beginner we are at and that is impeccability we need to be impeccable with our executions and better yet we need to be impeccable with our discipline we need to be impeccable in exercising that discipline that allows us to um, apply the strategy that we have uh, learned and proved to be um, effective. And again, for those of you who are not familiar with the word impeccable, it means flawless. I put the, the definition right there in front of you. That's the dictionary definition. Now, do you notice anything in common with these two goals? Equanimity of mind and impeccability. They are not money related and they are things that are completely under our control. Basically, when we trade, there are things we can control and there are things that are completely out of our control then it follows that our goals have to be related to those things that we can indeed control the moment we see things in proper perspective that all we can do to be impeccable with the things we can control um, and to see whatever happens as, let's say, not as participants, but as objective witnesses of what is happening, instead of being emotionally involved, then at that point we can enter into that different state of mind that I have been uh, describing, and that is the state of equanimity. So establishing a goal of earning $1,000 a day is not under our control. So it is futile to work on goals like that. And it doesn't matter if the goal is $10,000 a day or if it is $250 a day, as I just mentioned before, as an example. In reality, it's an example I read in a book of, of trading psychology. Earnings in the markets don't fall under the list of things that we can directly control. And I think you all can agree with me on that. I understand it may be disappointing to hear me saying that starting with a daily small goal of $250 is not a great idea, but it has nothing to do with the amount of potential earnings, but with the type of goals that we are setting. You could make the goal even smaller. You can make it $50 a day if you wish. And I will still tell you, it's not really a good goal and perhaps or likely it's not going to work. So let me expand a little bit on, on that to make a better case for you so you can better understand my point. And let's talk about the type of goals that you can set. So we have divided in do goals versus be goals. The main problem I have observed so far is that traders tend to write do goals instead of be goals. If you write, I want to make 
$250 a day in my trading. That's something you want to do. Hence, you write a do goal. And in my opinion, at least in trading, do goals are not very appropriate, at least not very effective. If you write, I want to earn 50 ticks or pips per trade, more likely you will create more stress around your trading. That's what do goals, in trading at least, do. They create stress. Why? Because those are things you cannot control. The market may move 50 pips or it may not. You want to influence the market to move with your goal. You want to influence the market to move with your, with your wishes or with, even with your prayers. But there is another type of goals that, in my opinion, have fantastic advantages. And I am referring to B goals. Because B goals propel you to your objective. And this should clarify those first two goals I suggested. Equanimity of mind and impeccability. Let's say that you discover that, this is just an example to, to make it more clear for you. Let's say that you discover that your main obstacle to, to your success in trading, at least at this point, is lack of patience. Okay, this is a very common one. If you were more patient, you would avoid taking setups that are not fully there and that inevitably leads to losses. In order to overcome this problem, instead of something that you do, you write a B goal. That is, instead of making $250 a day or $1,000 a day, your goal would be actually to be patient. Instead of getting 50 pips in your trade, your goal is to be patient. But being patient, obviously, is too wide of an issue. When you set goals that help you improve your performance, you want to be super focused and super specific. In this case, you want to identify where you are being impatient. For instance, you may be impatient once you are in the position and the market doesn't move immediately in their direction. Then you may exit the position at break-even, or maybe with small loss, just to discover with great frustration and disappointment that the trade just needed another bar to move in your direction. Had you stayed there for just another bar, the trade would have, you know, take off. And that's a major disappointment and frustration that comes as a result of being impatient. That's one way to apply impatience to the market. Or you may be impatient while waiting for your trade setups. That's a typical one, right? You're waiting for your tra trade setup to be fully present, and but you become impatient, and you enter impatiently in a position that results in a major loss. Let me give you an obvious example. Let's say that you are waiting for a moving average cross off, um, crossover, okay? And when you see them, when you see the two moving averages approaching, you get impatient, yeah? You get that itch that you want to be in the trade. You want to be as, as early as possible. And then you enter the position. And a few minutes later, you see the moving average separating again. But of course, now this has implications because now you don't want to lose you will feel horrible, you know, to know that that you were not smart enough, you were impatient, and then you entered the trade when the setup wasn't there. So now you don't want to lose. And then you stick to a position that gives you a major loss. Okay, I see that happening every day. You may even be impatient while doing your analysis. It's not that the analysis, you know, resolve all the problems. You may be impatient with it as well. Because let's say that you can't identify the proper pattern or the proper trend. And then, you, you know, you come up with an interpretation that is loose. It's not appropriate. Maybe let's say that it's not correct. 
But you want to come up with an interpretation because otherwise you feel, you know, inadequate. Some people are impatient to wait for their target to be hit and then they exit their position with small gains. All those are um, completely different issues, all related to impatience. So, we'll be a lot more efficient if we were to work on the aspect of impatience that most affect our results. And now, this is key. This is so important. I don't think we could even put a monetary value to this. As you write your B goal, do you also want to write a counter strategy for what to do in those moments when you may not be patient? And yes, the counter strategy may be something that you do, sure. Even if your goal is to be uh, uh, something, it's, let's say if your goal is a be goal and not a do goal, you may ha still have to do something. For example, a counter strategy for rushing to get into positions could be as simple as something you do. Make a checklist, right? That could probably uh, help you with that, uh, with that situation. And such strategic approach is something that you do indeed, but it will surely help you be more patient. And as a consequence, your results will not suffer from those useless losses that you had as a result of being impatient, as in this example, okay? We may talk about a different example. It may just be that establishing yourself in that patient approach is exactly what allows you to wait for your ideal setup. And because of that, you may indeed end up making the dollar amount per day or per trade or per week or per month that you intended. But they will be the result of a B goal, not a do goal. Of course, there are things you need to do in order to become something. For example, Again, if I want to be a medical doctor, well, I need to do something. I need to go to a medical school. I cannot be a medical school. I have to do that. That's something we do. It's not that we can suddenly be great traders without doing the stuff that is needed in order to become great at trading. And one of the things you need to do is to be strategic with your obstacles. Besides setting what we call do or be goals, you can go a bit deeper. One single session like today won't be enough, of course. But let's try to go one step farther, okay? One, one simple step farther. The first thing you need, the first thing you need to do in order to unleash your full potential, potential performance as a trader is to understand what your real bottom line's uh, goals are. What is that which drives you? In our psychological programs, we call it the ultimate why. The ultimate why is the real reason why you're trading. Just having clarity on your ultimate why can make a huge difference in your accomplishments. And here's why. Understanding your bottom line goals is what motivates you. It clarifies the reason behind why you are after what you are after. It provides the driving force you need to perform at your best as often as you can and also because focusing on the big goal helps you shape your intentions. And since many of the concepts we are going to, uh, to be discussing in this matter is 
they kind of edge on the philosophical side. Let's define what I mean by intentions so we don't get into, you know, uh, lost words here. Intentions are the internal motivating force that you can invoke at will to drive you to accomplish virtually anything you want. Now, in the beginning of this presentation, we spoke about milestone goals. So, you are aware that in order to achieve a big goal, you need to set minor and intermediate ones. And that is all okay. It helps us understand our goals for the first year and maybe even the second year of trading, depending on where you are at the moment. The problem is that achieving milestone goals never really gives you the lasting satisfaction you are after. At best, they typically give you temporary joy. And because they don't give you the payoff you want, they don't have the same motivating power that you need to operate at your very best. For instance, let's go back to our example. If you adopt the first year goal as to end the year without losses, you may not have the same motivation as if your first year goal were to earn enough money as to leave your job and devote to trading. That's probably more motivating, right? That's why you need to understand what your bottom line goals are. I hope that this is making sense to you. If you are not 100% clear on why you are doing what you are doing, you won't be able to take action with any passion or focus. You're just going to be going through a series of motions and very likely there won't, be, there won't even be motions that will lead you to your goal. And that's not going to increase your performance. Likely, then you will end up in that 40% uh, uh, of the pyramid or the 80% of the pyramid that I showed you in the beginning. You know, before people have a private session with me, typically we used to do that. We, we don't do that anymore, but we used to have um, interviews with, with people. And in order to do that, we, we requested that they fill up a questionnaire. And in that questionnaire, I asked them how uh, or what their goals were, how they see themselves in six months and so forth. And whenever I, I asked them for their goals, invariably they all say to make money, or a variation of it, of course. But if money is the only reason why you are trading, you probably are not going to last long enough in the business as to succeed, because the truth of the matter is that at the beginning stages of your trading career, you probably earn more money, may maybe easier money, um, with your job at that moment than with trading. Because trading really is not something easy. It takes time to learn trading as a profession. It's not something that happens overnight. So it's critical to examine your ultimate goals and intentions, what you are after, and why you are after it. I hope you guys have a better and more realistic way of how to approach trading goals. And I trust that following this short lecture, you will be having B goals that are motivating and that allow you to make important changes. In a, in a second, I'm going to be checking your comments and questions so we can have a, a chat. But before we do that, I want to give you this um, uh, announcement. If you are inspired to continue learning with us after today's webinar, we're excited to introduce our new YouTube membership program for this year. This exclusive offering is designed to provide you with continuous high quality training in trading technical analysis and trading psychology and goals as well each month for just nine dollars and 99 cents and you'll gain access to comprehensive training sessions that are 
crafted to facilitate your transformation into a proficient trader. This membership is an affordable investment in your education and a unique opportunity for direct mentorship and in-depth training from well, from our entire team and, of course, from myself. So join us and let's do this stuff together. I think uh, we can manage to do something really good here. So now let me uh, check your questions and your, and your comments. Let's see. All right. I see. Oh, welcome. We have people from Pakistan. And, and yes, looking forward to a new year as well. And I'm a big fan of your channel. Thanks for the education. You're doing all a favor. Actually, you, would, you wouldn't believe me, but I'm so thankful that you are here, that you are giving me a favor, because I love teaching. I love sharing with you my experiences, uh, you know, that I have accumulated almost three decades of doing this, and I just love it. So I thank you for, for being with me. And I don't see questions coming in, so I'm going to uh, say goodbye to you and wish you a wonderful year, hopefully with big goals, and I hope that you become the great trader that you want at least during this year accomplish those goals that you want and if you have any comment or any questions after this you know just write them under the video and i will be happy to get back to you all right um there is something here hi professor is the discount still on looking to purchase mastery course unfortunately the mastery course um, discount is uh, gone forever <laughs> i'm sorry about that but those those were prices that we had for, for many years and now they they finish um, money be the byproduct of your passion that's what Miral says yes I believe uh, there is something something with that you know uh, there was somebody I think uh, Lao Tse who said do what you love and you'll never have to work a single day of your life all right guys thank you very much I'll talk to you soon and I will comment under the video whatever uh, question you have. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.